Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to make my Madhu honeycomb blanket. Uh, this is the honeycomb section of it and this is uh, the border and uh, this blanket is made in four par five parts. Uh, the honeycomb section is made first. This is the part the first part that's made and then uh, the border is added I make the border in four different parts so one first the border on one side along the length and then the border on the other side along the length and then uh, along the along the width so uh, there are a couple of things to remember in this video uh, uh, I'm sorry in the blanket while making this blanket it is important that you meet my gauge uh, because the fabric that's built in this blanket uh, shrinks because of the way the stitches are made and if you do not meet my gauge your border stitches are going to be um, will not be appropriate you might get a wider or a smaller uh, border than what is needed and that for that reason it is very important to get for you to match my gauge um, if for some reason your gauge does not match mine or even if it does and your dimensions the dimensions of your blanket are not what they're supposed to be after the different parts uh, please reach out to me and uh, we will talk about how to proceed from there so I'll talk about each of these sections separately and how to make them and how to handle the tricky bits in all of them so um, continue watching this video and uh, I will start with the first section I'm going to start with the honeycomb part which is the first part that's made in the blanket and I'm going to make a small swatch here so the number of stitches that I'm going to use are going to be less than the actual blanket but the techniques I, I will be able to show you the techniques in in a small swatch so I'm going to use three colors uh, this is C1 uh, for me and I'm going to follow the instructions from the pattern so the first row says chain 89 I'm going to do 11 one, two, ten, eleven, and make the foundation row in the back loop. So I'm, I have a separate tutorial for explaining uh, how to make foundation rows uh, that goes in detail, into detail in uh, about how to make the foundation row and what different ways there are to make it. So I usually like to make my foundation row in the back loops and that's what I'm doing here. I identify the back loop for each chain and I make a stitch there. Should have 11 on my hook, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 loops on the hook. I'm going to make the reverse pass just like the usual. So that's chain 1 and yarn over pull through 2 loops across. Alright, so that's row 1 complete. Now uh, moving on to row 2, I have to change color there because it's made with a different color, C2. So I'm going to use this as my C2. I make a little knot uh, before I join. That helps with keeping the yarn in place uh, after the join. So. Um, Row 2 says forward stitch, that is this one. We don't do, uh, I'm sorry, it's the first stitch. So the first stitch, we don't have to do anything. We just let it be on the hook. And then it says 87, uh, 87 reverse stitches. Uh, so in this, it will be 9 reverse stitches. So I'm going to make 9 reverse stitches. So that's 1. 
Again, I have a separate tutorial for making reverse stitches. Um, you can find it uh, in my channel or uh, I will have a link in the description. nine so nine reverse stitches and then the last stitch the last stitch is made by picking the two vertical bars of the last stitch and here so you should have 11 loops on the hook two four six eight ten eleven and uh, i'm going to make the reverse pass just as i normally would so that's that's row two um, now rows three to six are the same so there are three four five six four rows of uh, first stitch 87 knit stitches so in this case nine and then the last stitch so I'm doing row three now so it's going to be nine one knit stitches Again, I have a separate uh, tutorial for how to make knit stitches in case uh, you are not aware of how to make them And then the last stitch. So that's uh, here's the reverse pass. So that is row three. Now I'm going to make three more rows of knit stitches. That's row four, row five, and row six. This is how the swatch looks after making uh three more rows of knit stitches so that's a total of four rows of knit stitches I'm, i repeated row three three more times and so this is at row six now row six is complete now i'm going to start making row seven so if you see row seven is made with color c1 so i have to reattach this yarn here now there are two ways of doing it you could either attach it as it is here just like this and you will have this little thread hanging in the back which is fine um, I I don't think there would be any problem with leaving this in the back but uh, you will only you have you will have one side at the back of your blanket which will have this line of yarn that uh, that will be showing in the back with the, whereas the other side will not have that so the other thing that you can do is that you can cut the yarn and reattach and then you will have these two ends to weave in. I chose to do that because I wanted a clean back for my blanket but I had a lot of ends to weave in at that point. So um, you can pick whatever uh, works best for you. Uh, both both methods are going to be fine. There's, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Just pick what you would like to do now um, for row seven you make it's the first stitch so this counts as the first stitch and then four knit stitches so that's one two three four knit stitches that's a total of five so one two three four five and then the overlay simple stitch in the back loop so i'm going to you're going to have to make an overlay simple stitch in the back loop of this row stitch so first i'm going to find what stitch lines up with this one so this stitch lines up with this one and with with this one so I'm going to make my next stitch, my stitch in this stitch. So I'm, uh, I've, we've got to make the stitch in the back loop. So I'm going to identify the back loop in the stitch, which is this and here. It's this one. 
and uh, if you've seen my video about how to make these overlay stitches I usually pick uh, two bars to make my stitches more robust so I also pick the other end of this back vertical bar so I pick these both together to make my stitch so I'm going to take my hook and find the back vertical bar the this is the entire back vertical bar from that stitch so I'm going to bring my yarn and that is one TSS the overlay TSS so and it is made in the back loop of this stitch so make sure that you're going into the stitch above this bump and not below this bump so it's above this bump here now um, it is I have to skip a stitch so I'm going to skip the stitch right that's that's right above this one and then I'm going to make four knit stitches so I have to now find the stitch that is after the skipped stitch so the easiest way that I find to do that is that I find the next stitch here so this is my neck next stitch here this so this is the one I've made my overlay stitch in, this one, and this is the next stitch. I trace it all the way up, and this is the stitch that is next. So I'm going to make my first knit stitch there, and then there's three more. So one, two, three, four, a total of four knit stitches, and the last stitch. And I'm going to now make the reverse pass. So here it is. This is how it looks. Um, this section is a little pinched and that is expected. That is what creates that honeycomb pattern. But you see that this is a nice clean stitch here. There's sort of a double loop there are two vertical bars here there are two vertical bars here it's a nice and robust stitch there's not much there is some pulling but um, it it does what it's meant to do it pinches this a little bit so we can get that honeycomb pattern if you look in the back there is a little uh, this section is a little bunched and that is to be expected so that completes row seven and now on to row eight. Row eight is a repeat of row two, but in color C3. So I'm going to go look for my color C3. So for this section, you will always be working with three colors at once, unless um, you choose to make it with more than three colors or less um, this can actually be made with multiple different color choices like you could use a gradient yarn and not use two different colors uh, for this part in the next honeycomb section or you could uh, make a scrap gown with every section with a different color so there's there's a lot of options here uh, I'm going to continue with the pattern and so now row 8 is a repeat of row 2 which was the first stitch and then reverse uh, reverse stitches and then the last stitch so I'm going to make nine reverse stitches so for this stitch I'm going to make it uh, just like any other but so if you look at this this one is the front loop here and this here sorry the front vertical bar and this here is the back vertical bar so I'm going to make that reverse stitch in this back vertical bar so I'm going to go here pick that back vertical bar and make my reverse stitch there be 
11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So those are 11 stitches and I'm going to make my reverse pass now. And this is how it looks. Now this is the end of row 8. Now rows 9 to 12 are a repeat of row 3 which are which is a row of knit stitches and so there are going to be four rows of knit stitches with the same color C3. So I'm going to go ahead and make one row in front of you and I'm going to make the rest and then come back. So that's how it looks after row 9. I'm going to make the rest of the knit stitch rows and come back. So this is how uh, it looks after completing 12 rows. So row 12 is done. Uh, I made 3 more rows of knit stitches. So that's a total of 4 rows of knit stitches and this is how it looks. So I'm going to now make the next row which is row 13 and um, row 13 is made with color c1 so i'm going to attach this again you can choose to cut the yarn and reattach or you could just pick it like this it will leave these little strands of yarn in the back if you're okay with that then you can just carry the yarn over so row 13 first stitch we just leave it here then there's one knit stitch then there is the overlay simple stitch in this row so uh, again how I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the stitch that is the next one so this is my next here I'm going to follow it all the way to the bottom so this is my stitch in which I'm going to make the overlay stitch so I'm going to find the back vertical bar which is this one I'm going to find the other part of it which is this one so I'm going to pick both of these to make my overlay stitch so here that's how I pick them and this is how I it up I don't pull it all the way because I want that little pinch to be there so I just keep it about the same height as or the same size as my other loops now uh, I need to skip a stitch and I need to make five knit stitches so by skipping a stitch I mean I have to skip the one that it is made over so that's this one I'm going to make five knit stitches starting the next so it is easy to uh, it's it's hard to find out which stitch to make your knit next knit stitch in and uh, I had trouble with it so I found a way uh, to to make my knit stitches uh, to find the stitch where to start my knit stitches e more easily so I just find the next stitch here and trace it all the way back up so that that was the one so this is the next stitch and if I trace this all the way then it's this one here this is where I'm going to make my next stitch so I'm going to pick this up so I'm going to make five knit stitches one two three four five and then there's another overlay stitch so I'm going to find the two vertical bars I'm sorry the, the two parts of the back vertical bar make a stitch there and that's it and then I need to make one knit stitch so this is my next stitch here 
and I trace it all the way back up. So this is the stitch that I'm going to make my knit stitch in. So I insert my hook here and make a stitch here and then the last stitch. So So this is how it looks after row 13. So you see this little hexagon starting to show up and once you make, once the next overlay stitch lines on top of this, this will become a more hexagon like shape. So um, if you continue making this pattern. So the, the pattern is such that you have to repeat these starting from here. You will repeat the pattern all the way till the top. And um, again, the pinching makes it look a little difficult in the beginning, but as the fabric grows, the weight of it keeps it in place and uh, you don't have to worry too much about, about it. It's just a little uncomfortable in the beginning. But once you have uh, I believe if you have three or four of these sections complete, um, I'm sorry, three or four of these honeycomb uh, lines complete, then uh, you will be able to make this much more comfortably. So this is pretty much all there is in uh, the first part of this pattern. So the it's it's just a repeat of these rows and you just keep making it until you reach the desired length. And um, I'm going to now talk about, in the next sections, I'm going to talk about how to make the border. So um, stay tuned. I talked about how to make the first part of the Man Madhu honeycomb blanket uh, earlier. And this is the swatch I made with uh, by following the instructions. This is much smaller than the actual blanket, but uh, this is the size I'm using to show you how to make the blanket. And uh, I will be able to show you all the techniques and the tricky bits that are a part of the uh, process of making this blanket. So now moving on to the next part, which is the first border. So um, this is where, assuming this is where the blanket, the first part ends, I'm going to continue making the border on top of this. So this is a very small swatch and that is why I won't be able to follow the instructions exactly, but I'll tell you exactly what to do. So if you look at row one, it the forward pass is made with the color C1, so you don't have to change the color. You can continue working with this one. And it says first stitch, then 10 reverse stitches, and then skip a stitch, and then 12 stitches, skip a stitch, 12, skip. So what really is happening here is that we are reducing the number of stitches by about, uh, I think it is uh, eight stitches. We had 80, uh, 89 stitches in, uh, in a row here, but we're going down to 81. The reason for that is that because of this pinching, the fabric shrinks a little. Like if you made, uh, I think these were 13 rows. So if you made 13 rows of just reverse stitches, the fabric would be slightly wider. So to accommodate for that, you have to reduce the number of stitches. And if you go by the instructions, you have the first stitch and then you count 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, in, for instance, just as an example, I'll take five here. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make five reverse TSS stitches. So I'll just go ahead and do that. You would not do five. You would follow what the pattern says, but I'm just giving you an example of how to do it. So one, two. So then skip the next one. So you would skip the next one after 10. So I'm going to skip one after five. So I'm not going to make a reverse uh, stitch in this one. I'm going to make it in the next one and here. 
so I'm just going to continue making them all the way till the end but you will have to follow the instructions so you will make 10 skip one make 12 skip one make 12 skip one all the way till the uh, five times and then you will have 11 before the last stitch in the end so I I actually reduced by one in this so I have I should have 10 2 4 6 8 10 I had 11 in when I started the swatch now I have 10 so I'm going to make the reverse pass just like you normally would and that is row 1 of the border part B1 and that's how it looks now on to rows 2 to 4 there just uh, rows of reverse stitches so I'm going to make one in front of you and then I'm going to go off camera and make the rest and come back And here it is this is how it looks so I added another row of reverse stitches and um, so at after a few rows after about three rows of reverse stitches I recommend you hold up your blanket and make sure that the uh, that the border does not look wider or uh, well it won't be uh, smaller but it shouldn't be wider than the original fabric so uh, i'm sorry the the honeycomb section so uh, if it is any different uh please reach out to me uh, we might have to figure out what uh adjustments to make or um, if you're okay with that width you can go ahead and continue making the blanket but i had to do a fair amount of math to figure out what is the right number of stitches so that the width was um, width of this border matched the width of the honeycomb section so I'm going to now go offline and so this was this was row 2 of the instructions uh, for part B1 I'm going to go offline and make the rest uh, two more rows and come back this is how um, it looks after completing uh, four rows of the border B1 section and um, I'm going to make row five now and I need to attach the color C3 uh, I I'm going to pick this one for the purpose of this video and I'm going to start making row 5 which is a repeat of row 2 which is a row of reverse stitches please pick the, the color that matches c3 for you so that is row five a row of reverse stitches then row six is a row of knit stitches so i'm going to go ahead and make row six so these are fairly straightforward it's a repeat of either rows of um, reverse stitches or knit stitches the only tricky bit is the overlay stitches and the reason I'm doing this border specifically is to show you how to do a section uh, the overlay stitches in this part. So let me just show you the blanket quickly so you know what I'm talking about. The blanket, these overlay stitches are different than the ones in the, the honeycomb pattern. The honeycomb pattern is simple stitches overlaid and this is double crochet stitches so i'm going to show you how i've done that okay so here i have row six done now row seven i'm going to 
pick up color C1. Again, you are free to either cut and join or just pick the yarn up as I did. Uh, now overlay double crochet. So I have a separate video for this uh, overlay stitch as well. Uh, you're welcome to go check it out. So in this case, I'm going to pick uh, so there's a first stitch and then I have to make a double crochet stitch in the next overlay double crochet. So these are the two bars. So this is essentially the entire back vertical bar of the next stitch. So I'm going to make a double crochet in that stitch. So this is pretty much, this stitch is the same height as the two knit stitches. So there is no, there is hardly any pinching in this section. There is some, but not much, not as much as the honeycomb section. So did uh, overlay double crochet, then a knit stitch in the next, and then a double crochet overlay in the next all the way till the end so in my swatch here i have 10 stitches in this row to be able to make this properly i need an odd number of stitches because uh, of the way this pattern is the border pattern is so i'm one stitch off otherwise i would end with an overlay stitch and then the last stitch but right now i'm just going to continue making this So this is this is how it looks. Uh, I would, as I said, there would be another stitch overlay stitch over here in yours. Um, you will end with uh, one overlay and then the last stitch. But because I had even number of stitches, I could not make that. But this is how you would make that. I'm going to make one more row over here uh, so I can show you how to work in these overlay stitches. So the next row is row eight, where I repeat row two, which is a row of reverse stitches with the same color C1. So I'm going to make a reverse stitch. So I'm going to identify the back vertical bar of this stitch, which is this one here. So this is the front and this is the back. I'm going to make my stitch in that back bar. So what I do is I insert my hook. I use this part of the hook to pick up that stitch and make reverse TSS sorry a reverse stitch so here it is this is a row of reverse stitches and if I continue making this, this is just this border pattern is a repeat of pretty much this entire section over and over again. Uh, only this color will change. Um, so uh, right now it's this one. I think I used C3 first, then I use C4 and then I use C2. So um, you can choose whichever colors you like, but this is how you make that overlay part. So it's just a repeat of reverse stitches and then a couple of rows of the knit stitch here. Well, actually uh, a reverse stitch row, a knit stitch row, and then the overlay. So that's about it uh, for this, this part. Um, it's I think it's fairly straightforward if you can get a hang of how to make the overlay stitches. Uh, otherwise it's just rows of reverse and knit stitches. So after you're done making uh, part A, uh, the, sorry, the part B1, the first border, which will be something like this. I stopped at, uh, I think it was row, so it was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, at row 11. But you will go on and complete all 22 rows. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was that do not make the cast off row. Uh, leave the last row as it is because... Uh, we're going to make 
a final row which will just be the cast off for the entire blanket so make sure you don't do any casting off just um, tie a knot here you can cut and tie and loose ends at this point for this part of the border but I'm going to go to the other side that where this is where we started the blanket so I'm going to make the border B2 in this so for that I'm going to attach color C1 and the instructions for this part are exactly the same as part B1 except for uh, very subtle differences uh, because we are going to reattach and start making the the border here well, on this side we had we had this one row which we could build on top of but over here we don't this what you see here is the are the two uh, bars of the chain that we did not pick up we made I made the I made the reverse TSS row in the in the back loop and so these are the remaining two loops of the of the chain so to make the um, the first row of part B2 so first of all we need to make that first stitch so the for the first stitch I like to uh, attach my yarn here in this vertical section here so here th this is the chain and this is where I like to make my first stitch so I'm going to attach the yarn here and then I'm going to make a stitch in the next so this is the first one I already have that covered now these are the two remaining loops off the chain and I'm going to make my next stitch there so I'm going to pick both of them and make a stitch there so that's going to be one and then two so just uh, if you look at the instructions um, you have to make the first stitch and then there's ten reverse stitches so in this case instead of reverse stitches it would be just uh, attaching your yarn and uh, making that first row instead of making reverse stitches you're just picking these two uh, loops remaining loops of the chain and making a stitch there so but you will follow the instructions where uh, it says you have to skip stitches so you make 10 of these and then um, you skip a stitch in for the purpose of this demo I'm going to make five and skip so one two three four five and then I'm going to skip one and I'm going to make stitches in the rest again remember to pick both the loops uh, of the chain and the last one again this is my last chain and I like to make my stitch the last stitch in the last by picking the last two bars here uh, just like you'd make the uh, last stitch of a regular Tunisian stitch so I'm going to do that and I'm going to make the reverse pass So that pretty much that is row one done for part B2 now you can continue making the remaining rows just like you did for part B1 where uh, row two is a row of reverse stitches so this will be row two the way I'm making it here And uh, you have to make sure that you have 83 stitches total um, and not 81 I'm sorry I think I made a mistake while filming the previous part uh, there are 83 loops on your hook there are 83 stitches in all so 
so here so that's the second row of reverse stitches and you can continue making this just like the previous part so I'm going to make a few rows of mine and I'm going to come back and show you how it looks I made a few more rows of uh, the part B2 uh, to mirror what I did in part B1 here so uh, this is not what your blanket will look like but I'm just making a swatch to show you the tricky parts so you know how to tackle them when you're making your blanket so here in the middle you'll have part one where we're making the honeycomb section then you will have this part which uh, was part B1 which was the first part of the border and then I made a border on the other side which is part B2 again I did not cast off either of these this side is not ca not cast off and this side is not now I'm going to show you how to make part B3 so parts B3 and B4 are exactly the same so I'm just going to show you how to do one and that's part B3 and then uh, part B4 is going to be exactly the same so if you look at the first instruct the first row for part b3 is you have to make a stitch in the first 22 stitches so in your blanket you will have 22 rows of the border and from what my uh, swatches from the measurements of my swatches and my blanket it turns out that my horizontal and vertical gauge is the same for reverse stitches so for this section the because I, I have 22 rows there will be 22 stitches on this side whereas the honeycomb section the number of stitches I need on the side are going to be less than the actual number of stitches that were here so we'll have to skip a few stitches and then again there's the border here so there'll be 22 more stitches here so 22 stitches no skipping and then there'll be some skipped stitches here and then 22 stitches no skipping so I'm going to go ahead and attach the yarn here so as I said uh, in part B uh, B2 I like to attach instead of attaching at the top I like to attach on the side so that's just like how the first stitch would be in a regular Tunisian stitch and then so I'm already done with this one so I'm going to make my next stitch in the next so I'm going to pick up the two vertical bars here um, so if you hold it this way this is how I made the stitch so this is where you would made the last stitch for the next row so that is where I'd insert my hook yarn over and pull through and keep that there I do the same for the next one so all 22 stitches of the border you'd go on and do the same picking up every single uh, last stitch that was made in that in that border so for me here I'm going to keep going until here so that's it and then uh, the instructions say skip the fifth stitch and then every second and fifth stitch so in that case what you will do is you'll make one two three four and skip the fifth one so you will make one two three four and then skip the fifth one and then you'll make two so you'll make one here no skip the second so you'll make one here skip the second so skip this one and and so on you will keep doing that until you have uh, 121 stitches so a good way to do that is you keep going until you find the first row of the other side of the border so in that case I'm just gonna do something similar I'm going to three I'm going to make four skip the fifth one two three four skip the fifth and then make one skip the second and then make four so make sure that you count your stitches properly because of the pinching 
uh, it is hard to find these stitches sometimes so it's got one so remember there are five rows of these and one row of this and then five rows of these and then one row of this so that might help you count so one two three four and it says skip one but i'm i've reached the first row of the next border so i'm going to just make a stitch here and make a stitch in every stitch of the border Make sure you pick the two stitches, the two, two vertical bars, I'm sorry, not the two stitches. So now the last one, the last one I like to make it just like the last stitch in a regular uh, Tunisian crochet stitch. So that would be, that would be here. So I'm going to make the last one over there. So that helps in keeping the border all the way to the end. If I make it over here instead, it will be fine. It won't be a big problem, but uh, I'll just show you quickly how that looks. So if I make it here, the border ends here instead of at this point. I want it to end at this point here so I go all the way till the end and make the stitch in the vertical bars instead of the horizontal ones so there it is and you just go ahead and make the reverse pass so this is sort of the foundation row for the border it's a uh, to make sure that you have the right number of stitches to make the border the width that uh, will match the length of the blanket and uh, again it's it's important for you to match my gauge to be able to get these right with the number of stitches that I have used So this is what it is it's not the best right now because um, I didn't honor the gauge in this swatch but if you follow the instructions exactly uh, you should be able to get it right so after this is just continue making uh, the rows just as you would normally uh, do as you made the first the border b1 b2 you continue making b3 and then b4 the same way and um, I'm not going to make it anymore because they're exactly the same as these two. It's just making them on the side instead of along the length. Um, and I think that's about it uh, for making this blanket. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach me. If you have issues with your gauge or if you, uh, even if you were able to match my gauge and your um, your uh, dimensions are coming out to be different uh, let me know and uh, we can try and figure something out but if um, if not I hope you enjoy making this blanket I had a wonderful time uh, making it it um, I really like how it turned out I hope you will too thank you so much bye bye